Hello, and happy December. We currently don't have much snow in my area, so like many others, I'm impatiently waiting for colder temperatures and more snowfall, especially at the lower elevations. Last spring, I had the opportunity to try out the new Alpina Alaska XP boot with the Explorer binding on a set of Alpina Discovery 80 skis. I was very impressed with the setup, and I've had several people ask me to compare Alpina's Discovery 80 ski to Fisher's Traverse 78. Fisher has revised the Traverse 78 for the 2021-22 year, so the new Fisher ski is a different ski than what I own. The new Fisher ski has the same side cut dimensions, but is a little bit shorter in length and built with a lighter weight core, and I haven't had the chance to examine it or ski it. That being said, let's take a look at the differences between my older Traverse 78s and the Alpina Discovery 80 ski. One of the most obvious differences is in the length recommendation by the manufacturers. My Traverse 78s are 179 centimeters in length, and Fisher recommends that the 179s are for people weighing between 143 and 196 pounds. The Discovery 80 skis that I tested were only 175 centimeters in length, which is the shortest version they sell. The 175s are recommended for people who weigh under 120 pounds, so the skis I tested were way too short for me. All things being equal, a longer ski is generally faster than a shorter ski, and it is usually easier to climb hills and make tight turns on a shorter ski. The difference in length for my weight class between the two different ski designs is 19 centimeters, almost seven and a half inches, which is a really big difference. A lot of people often recommend picking one size up from Fisher's recommendations for those who want to optimize glide and are willing to accept less grip when climbing hills. As you might expect, the two short for me Alpina Discovery 80 skis had amazing grip on the uphill and acceptable glide, but I would never recommend picking a ski that is shorter than what the manufacturer recommends. Now let's compare the tip rocker. The Discovery 80 is on top and my old Traverse 78s are on the bottom. When a modern off-trail cross-country ski is compressed, the tip rises and the snow contact point is shifted rearward. This design feature is very useful in soft snow and assists both in turning and aggressive climbing. The tip on the Discovery 80 has a higher and more aggressive upturn than the Fisher. This can be beneficial for braking trail and floating the ski on the downhill run in deep snow. The skis also have upturned tails with tail rocker. The 98 has the most upturn, and the 78s and the 80s are similar. Let's talk a little bit about camber. Ski camber is one of the most important characteristics of a cross-country ski. Cross-country skis always have more camber than downhill skis. It is the camber that gives the cross-country ski its kick and glide characteristics. It makes the ski lively and powerful. It is also the magic that allows for grip and glide. Cross-country skis designed for fast track skiing have a very stiff and highly camber design. Off-trail cross-country skis, on the other hand, try to find a happy medium between what is desirable for kick and glide and what is ideal for downhill control. The 78s and 80s fit somewhere in the middle. They have enough camber for off-trail kick and glide tours and moderate side cut to make them easier to turn. The tip to mid side cut on the Discovery 80s is 22 millimeters while the side cut on the Traverse 78 is 17 millimeters. By comparison, the side cut on my S-Bound 98s is 29 millimeters. Just for fun, I set up a simple rig to test camber stiffness. This is not a controlled lab test, just something I could use as a comparison. I used a digital scale to measure the force required to compress the ski until it touched a 3.1 millimeter spacer. My old Traverse 78s required 18.2 pounds of force. The new Discovery 80s required 19.4 pounds of force. And my old S-Bound 98s required 11.5 pounds of force. When I tested the brand new S-Bound 98s, they required 13 pounds. My Volley objectives, which are a backcountry downhill ski by design, only required three pounds of force. Now let's take a look at the traction pattern. The Traverse 78 at 179 centimeters in length is on the top and the Discovery 80 at 175 centimeters is on the bottom. The two traction patterns are very different. 
The Discovery 80s pattern is about 50 millimeters less than its total length, but that is what I would expect because the ski is 40 millimeters shorter. The traction pattern on the Fisher ski is progressive in design, meaning that it is more aggressive underfoot and less so away from the foot. You can clearly see the difference in this photo. The Fisher also has a hole through the ski that is used to attach Fisher's easy skin. Another big difference between the two ski designs is that Fisher uses a different plastic material for the glide and traction portion of the ski. As near as I can tell, the Alpina base is uniform. I'm not an expert in plastics, but it looks like the Alpina base is centered, and if so, the traction pattern should hold wax very well, and it would be easy to tweak the glide and grip properties of the traction zone with typical cross-country waxes. On my Fisher skis, I typically hot wax the centered glide zone and use a liquid wax in the grip zone. I haven't had the opportunity to ski the Alpina on anything other than warm snow, and it worked great for both grip and glide. There is no reason to believe that it won't work just fine in cold, dry snow. Traction pattern skis don't work very well on hard ice, so your only alternative under those conditions is either to use a skin or to goop them up with a soft wax. So what else is there to say about the Discovery 80 ski? I think it is a great ski in both design and function. It is also a bargain in price at around $250 US compared to the Traverse 70H, which typically sells for around $300. I don't think you can go wrong with either ski. The Easy Skin is a nice feature on the Fisher, but the Discovery has more length options, a bigger side cut, and a shovel that just screens out for powder. Over on the Telmark Talk Forum, Johnny has given the ski a raving review, and I'll put a link down below if you'd like to read it. Well, that's about it for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and until next time, be safe and be kind.